All right. Welcome into the official. We have uh, already done one show in January, so we are continuing our look at the 2023 class, um, looking at it in a couple of different ways as we get to, you know, the final national signing day. And then, you know, eventually we'll be flipping the calendar over to 2024. But for now, we will look at senior risers. Now that senior tape is out, we're going to take a look at guys who well, risers and followers, so guys who kind of made a bump on senior tape and maybe guys who we are docking off of their senior tape. So uh, stay with us, and we'll see who's emerging as we get to the finish line of that 2023 class coverage. This is The Official. <laughs> Welcome into the official. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Um, how's everyone's Tuesday? I don't normally ask that. Everyone going good? <laughs> Everything's good, man. Yep, yeah, I guess I let the cat out of the bag there. We do record on Tuesday. It doesn't get released till Thursday, but so be it. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, uh, like and subscribe to this video if you enjoy what we do with recruiting here on the official as kind of an offshoot of Campus to Canton. That's the main website, so go check that out campus to candid.com as we head into the off season here if you've been watching this show you've ever thought about you know hey what is the most immersive fantasy experience i can get campus to canton leagues when we specialize in giving you content uh, enabling you to dominate your campus to canton leads but you have a full college side team you have a full nfl dynasty team and they feed into each other so basically that's why we focus on the recruits here because it's essentially you get those guys as recruits and you keep them all the way through their NFL career if you so choose. We have tools, articles, guides, and much, much more at campuscanton.com with the membership starting at $2.99. So go check out the website. Now, getting into the end of the class, guys, we're going to, you know, it's going to be a sad day. We've, we've rocked with the 2023 class now for a long time. We've gotten to know these players on a personal level. We have some relationships with these players. Uh, we've seen them live, um, and now they're going to be going off to college. It feels like, you know, a parent saying goodbye to their kid. They're going to go off to college, and we won't, you know, we won't interact with them not nearly as much anymore, uh, either from a film watching or uh, whatever. So we're looking at senior tape. Highlights are starting to come out. Um, and what what do you think of when you pop on some senior tape? Because obviously we've been dealing with the junior tape and, and all this stuff for this whole time. I mean, some guys are just now releasing the highlights from their senior season. What's your approach, Matt? Like, how do you, you know, you're obviously not erasing everything you already thought about the player. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of, you know, comparing and contrasting as to, you know, what they did last year. Uh, you know, finding out if they improved in any areas, you know, because if they're, if they're just still doing the same exact thing they were the same last year, then, you know, they're, they're not getting better, which is something they should be actively doing at this age, at this level of the game. So it's definitely a bit suspicious to me if I don't see some sort of jump, at least, unless they're already performing at like such a super high level that they can't really go any further in high school, you know? Sure. David, so kind of take me briefly through your process. You know, we're about to hit National Signing Day. And last year at this time, we were just starting the official. We were just starting to get into the 2023 class. So where do you go? I mean, obviously, in the beginning of this cycle, you only have junior tape. And now we've experienced the high school season. You guys have watched some of these games live or, or you know, brief stream after the game. What is your process now at the end of the thing? You're getting some more information, but is it enough to really throw your, you know, evaluation one way or the other? I don't know if it changes. Uh, I, cause as we were doing this exercise, I, I didn't really have a guys, a lot of guys that changed a ton. I, but I think uh, for the most part is we're just collecting information. We're trying to get more familiar with the class in general, because this year we've gone really, really deep. Um, so we're trying to find any more gems we could possibly find. Um, but yeah, we're just combing through stats and, uh, like the film you said, um, I pretty much echoed everything Matt said. I mean, if guys are starting to plateau or 
some guys actually get worse, honestly, like, you know, maybe they gained bad weight or something and it's, it's obvious on tape. Like that's definitely a bad sign. Um, but I definitely think there's like interesting things you can learn from, like, I do think the junior tape does have value just, you know, comparing it to senior tape. And also I think you pick up on small things. Um, Steven Johnson was a good example. Uh, a guy that you picked up on Alfred that you, you obviously nailed him. Um, but he was a guy that played at, a um, played on the outside the of the Soto. smaller text. Yeah. At a, so as a junior, he played on the outside, um, at a smaller Texas school and played really, really well. Um, and kind of dominated. And then he transferred to Soto, which is like this huge school. They got John Day Cook there and he got kind of moved into the slot. It wasn't nearly as effective. I think he was like third on the team and, and yep. receiving yards and stuff like that. So it's like, but he was still good. And then he goes to Oklahoma state, they put him back on the outside and, and he already broke out. He was a nine year one zero and all that stuff. So you're really, there's a huge puzzle here. You can learn a lot of stuff from, from junior and senior film. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's great. Um, you know, and I'll just share what I have learned, especially as we've taken these guys from like the very beginning of the cycle where we have only junior tape and, you know, at the end of the cycle, when we're almost ready to flip the script, we're getting senior tape and it's like probably not enough to move the needle too much. We will talk about some guys who, for whatever reason, really made a move. Um, but I tr I've actually become like junior tape is kind of the baseline because I can actually look at junior tape from 2024 guys now and watch it all the way to the end. I can look at junior tape for anybody. Um, one question I have for you, because junior tape kind of spans both sides of the coin here. So you can kind of keep that consistent. And then maybe senior tape you use to find the edges, sand down the edges a little bit on your evaluation. Here's a question. If you have a name you come across now for whatever reason. When you're going to go look, do you look at senior tape only? Because to me, that could – a guy could look really good on senior tape, but in my mind, I'm looking at a lot of junior tapes. And so then if I only look at a guy's senior tape as my first look, maybe I'm going to overrate him a little bit. So do you go back and look at junior tape if you learn of a name right now or you just kind of go first thing that you see? And I haven't – I don't really know the answer to my question for myself. I'm still learning. What do you guys do? I typically just stick with the senior tape. I think, you know, since it's the most recent, it's the most relevant, really. And if they weren't producing before this year, then that definitely brings up concerns. And if they don't have a good reason as to why they weren't producing, then, you know, I'm probably not going to uh, bump them that high up. But, you know, it, it's really a case-by-case -case basis with these guys. Yeah, David, right. any other thoughts there? Pretty much the same thing. Um, I generally, yeah, I don't know if it's the right answer, but... I do go straight to the senior tape just because it's the most, it seems like it's the most relevant, but maybe, um, maybe it is worthwhile to go back to the junior and maybe trying to f try to figure out what, what the what reason for the breakout was. Maybe they had like a growth spurt or something like that. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's good. I, I just, I thought about this because it's like, is it unfair? Am I giving an unfair advantage if I just learn a name now, look at the senior tape, it looks great. But basically my mental catalog for all these guys is kind of always junior because the whole year we're evaluating and ranking and grading these guys on junior tape because we don't have senior yet. So uh, just something worth thinking about. But, you know, let's get into the juicy names, right? Everybody wants to know names. So, Matt, um, you and I both have the same guy as a riser. And I'm a little surprised because I'm not sure he could have gotten too much higher for you. But I will let you – uh, take the torch here. Talk to about Cordell Russell. I mean, I feel like he's just – everything's coming up Cordell Russell. He was an MVP at one of the days of the All-American game. I think he caught a touchdown in the game. I know he caught a bunch in practice. Did he catch one in the game too? So yeah, everything's, everything's coming up Cordell Russell. He's a riser for you. He's a riser for me. But you already liked him. So what put him even more over the top for you? Yeah, so actually I wasn't really that big of a fan of him as a uh, junior. He's a guy that wasn't very productive. I think he was you know, the number three wide receiver on his own team. And he just didn't have uh, as well-rounded of a skill set. He, he's pr uh, like a prime example of one of these guys that really takes their big jump from you know year three to year four in high school. And uh, you know, he dominated the season, you know, well over a thousand yards, double digit touchdowns. He looked significantly, you know, improved from just his junior tape alone. Um, 
and yeah, uh, I think on top of that, you know, he just has incredible upside. So uh, it's glad it's good to see that not only does he have that upside, but he's also working to improve. And uh, sure. it, he very surely uh, showed that this year. Yeah, and he's just like so freaky. We've talked about him a number of times at this point. Um, he was our the star of our Dunk Fest show. I mean, he just oozes dominance, you know. Um, and I still say, you know, he does have a couple of things I'd like to see him work on, or I'm not sure if he can do at the next level. You know, some of the stuff of the technical things like off the line being really quick and good and avoiding press and things like that. But he also seems like the kind of guy at this point, I'm kind of willing to bet on. He, I mean, he's the kind of guy who's like, none of that might matter because he just dominates down the field, dominates in the air. Um, so I moved him up and he, he was a, a whole, basically a point one, which, you know, our grading goes from like, you know, he started at a point six, four for me and, and wound up at a point seven, four. That's a huge jump. So point one, He's tied for my biggest riser of the entire process right now. And um, I'm in the same boat as you. It took me a little minute to get there. But, yeah, the senior tape shows a lot of that diversity. I think that the junior tape was a little limited. So, Cordell Russell, hats off. You look great. Um, David, let's go. you got a couple quarterbacks here. I'm going to kind of skip around. I know we have these guys listed on the sheet. Um, but Levitt and Sellers, two guys we've talked about quite a bit. And um, just want to reiterate, you know, why they were risers for you. And you can lump them both together if you want, the two quarterbacks, Levitt and Sellers. Yeah, we've kind of talked about them before. But um, uh, so, like, Levitt wasn't, a, wasn't that good as a junior, honestly. Um, something happened to him athletically. And you can see that in his rushing stats for sure. He, I think he more than doubled his rushing stats this year. Uh, he took his team to the state championship. I mean, 12.6 yards per attempt, uh, you know, 36 touchdowns and five interceptions. Um, statistically off the charts, the charting that I did on him was just was really, really good. Um, and then Sellers actually didn't really play it very much as a junior. He actually broke a bone in his chest uh, and it was actually like obstructing his heart. It was like this whole big thing. But um, he's back and he he just had an amazing season. He He was he took his team. To a state championship win, 15 and 0, um, 11.4 yards per attempt. He had 45 touchdowns, two interceptions passing, and then he had uh, 1,338 yards rushing with another 17 yard, uh, 17 touchdowns on the ground. Um, so what was that so quick he, That's like 60 something, almost 70 touchdowns. Yeah, he had 62 t- total touchdowns. So he had like four touchdown, over four touchdowns per game. Uh, he had uh, a touchdown like on 30% of his completions. I don't know. It's not a stat I usually look at, but I just, it jumped out to me. Like that seems kind of crazy. So, you know, stats wise, film wise, he's, he's a freak. I I went through some of his soccer highlights too, which I was, you know, the 220 pound soccer player is just very strange to see. And I mean, the guy can move. So he definitely showed off his traits this year. Um, got a little ways to go as far as like accuracy but i definitely i can see his talent for sure yeah I and mean, he got a late offer um you know south carolina pulled him from uh, syracuse and syracuse had some coaching changes that probably played into that a little bit but you know he's going to be sec bound which is huge i mean that's that's a huge deal to get an sec offer there at the end staying home uh you gotta like him he gets a year to chill with rattler obviously but um that's a very interesting guy now in the SEC, what he can do. So absolutely good call there. And that senior year was was insane. I agree with you. Um, and then another guy for me I'll bring up, you know, we're talking quarterbacks here a little bit. Avery Johnson for me, I've been a big Avery Johnson fan. There's no doubt about it. But when I was grading his tape a lot of times, I kept going back to it. And there were some things that I, the junior tape, I just needed to see a little more. Uh, and I've, I've been saying this like quarterbackiness, like he's a great athlete. He can do a lot of things out of structure, but I just didn't see a lot of the, you know, Hey, this is a clear accuracy pass. This is a good read, et cetera. David, your charting really helped me to kind of get a better picture of him. He was off the charts. You said you, you know, uh, Sam Levitt had a great senior year, but you looked at Avery Johnson. They were very similar. A lot of the things that we look at average, you know, depth of target, uh, deep target accuracy percentage, um, 
you know, he's got velocity, a lot of these things. And I just was like, I had graded him a little bit low on like accuracy and, and some of those things, but your numbers from the charting said they're great. So I just had to like bump them up from that. I mean, it's hard to tell accuracy on highlights, right? Because they're all completed passes. So you're kind of projecting a little bit there. Um, anyway, so he bumped up a whole point one for me as well. And he's now like in my top five QBs. Um, might be a little strong, but I'm okay with it just because I, I love his upside. Um, let's shoot it to Matt here. You've got a guy you know, that we've briefly touched on, but give me the full scouting report uh, you know, summary here for Jalen Smith. We've mentioned him a couple times, but he is a big time riser and you kind of put it, planted your flag on him, you know, not too long ago. And now I think everyone's uh, agreeing. Yeah. I actually don't think we've brought him up on the show yet. If I remember correctly, since he's such a, you know, a recent riser, um, he's a guy, he's a wide receiver going to Michigan state, uh, six foot one ninety, I believe. And uh, he was teammates with Matthew Golden in his junior season, uh, Matthew Golden's senior season in high school. So he overshadowed him quite a good bit. Uh, they both played Klein Kane in Texas, a pretty big school. And uh, it wasn't until like, near the end of the season Jalen Smith started to pick up. I, I believe Golden missed a couple games, and he really shined. And then fast forward to this season, uh, Smith basically takes over Golden's full role. He's you know playing outside. He's filling at quarterback, playing some running back. A bit of Swiss Army knife there. Uh, so, yeah, he's just a super well-rounded player. His game's pretty similar to Matthew Golden's, except he's a bit bigger. So, uh, I don't have him ranked quite as aggressively as I did Golden, but, you know, he's still very high for me. About as high as I could put somebody that, you know, uh, rose this late in the season. Yeah, it just showed up, basically. But kind of like Matthew Golden did for us last year. I mean, everybody starts talking about this guy going to Houston – and he did not disappoint as a true freshman, even with uh, Nathaniel Dell there. So, you know, let's hopefully Jalen Smith will, and you know, arguably he signed with a more prestigious program. Um, you know, I don't know about the offense and the stats that will come with it, but like Michigan State, Big Ten, you know, not that far removed from challenging for a Big Ten title. So good program, quality program that he's headed to. Uh, moving right along here, I'm get you put Davis or Jacobs here, David Vandravius. I know this is a guy who's been on a lot of our uh, front of our minds. I'm not again. I'm not sure we've talked about him here, but we've definitely talked about him in other places on on some other. I think we talked venues. about him here. Yeah, maybe from the. I don't remember when, but yes, Vandravius Jacobs out of Florida, committed to FSU. Give us a summary on him. Yeah, so he just kind of blew up. I, he like doubled his production this year, this season. I mean, he had 100 receptions, 1500 yards, over 20 touchdowns against solid competition. Uh, 26 SOS, which is you know average to above average. So, um, but as far as his tape goes, I thought he played um, stronger after the catch. He actually broke quite a few tackles, um, and he's got like a slender build. But you can see like. Um, you know, he's very, he's good contact balance for a guy who's like 170. You wouldn't expect it. And he just made, uh, I think he just made more catches where he kind of needed to use like all his superpowers to like pull it off. Um, he just kind of these wow catches. Uh, there's, there's a specific one in the corner of the end zone that I'm thinking of where he just had to like, it just showed like high level coordination where he's like kind of falling back, jumping back. Um, he's, ex he's using all of every little, inch that he has like he's really <laughs> using his length there so um he just he just jumped out to me quite a bit he just um the one concern i guess is just you know def uh defensive back manipulation he still needs to get better um, and and tighten up his route running a little bit too but i thought he jumped up quite a bit this year yeah i mean some of the things you were describing is you know i'd put that all in the body control category which you know, sounds kind of boring because we all want to talk about speed and size and all this stuff. But like when I'm watching these guys and you watch a lot of tape, some guys just really, like you said, get like they get the most out of their frame. They get the most out of their attributes. They use every inch of their being to, you know, make these plays. And that's what that's what I heard. So that's always good stuff. And that's kind of a little, in you know, intangible um, to really put a finger on it, uh, no pun intended, but um, 
you know, I think those are great features. And, and I think those that stuff translates. That stuff definitely translates. I'll throw two names out there. I'm not going to go too – I didn't have any names that like, came out of nowhere for me, but I was more thinking of like, guys I had rated and then um, significantly took a jump. Eugene Wilson, for me, I just think he's a very good football player. Doesn't have the size. I don't even think he's got tremendous long speed. I think it's okay in the 20 mile per hour range. Um, you know, not wildly uh, you know, fast, kind of undersized, but like you just watch him. He's so, he's just good. He's scored from every possible way on the field this year. Um, he's, he's got good instincts. I know these are intangibles, instincts, body control, but these are the things he can bring to the table to me. Um, and, you know, there's some DB footage of him playing in the secondary. The way he starts and stops and changes momentum from going backwards to going forwards, making a tackle, whatever, that will translate to the offensive side of the ball as well. I think he's going to be very hard to tackle with the ball in his hands, and he's going to be able to make a lot of things happen on the field. So I'm excited about him. Uh, uh, Talent-wise, I'm a Gator fan, and I don't know what – the hell to expect from our offense so statistics wise i have no idea college fantasy wise i have no real idea but um sometimes talent can overcome a situation and i think he's really good cedric baxter i just had to give him a, a you know i bumped him up a little bit but he's now uh you know flirting with an 80 he's at 78 that's up from where he was just kind of that's one of those guys where it's like i just creeped up a couple of different categories because i was like He's you know, a little more well-rounded than I thought he was. And, and you know, it, it ended up giving him a better grade. So those are my guys. And then, Matt, I think the other one I have for you, we can touch on uh, quickly before we hit a couple followers. Roderick Robinson, a guy we all know very well, huge running back headed to Georgia. What stood out that made you want to bump him up this senior season? Uh, yeah, he was a guy that I had some questions about some of his uh, long speed and just general athletic ability. I think he kind of put that to bed this year. After just looking, you know, even even more uh, suited up for his frame, really, because he's such a big running back, you know, two thirty plus, and uh, he's really moving well. He can, you know, hit over twenty one point five miles per hour, which is incredible <laughs> at his size, and uh, he can accelerate too, which is the probably the more impressive part. He's not just a build up long speed guy. So that, and you know, his receiving ability, it's just you know, he's going to the crowded Georgia running back room, which. Holds me back from putting him even higher, but for me, he's pretty solidly the RB two in the class. Ooh, I, I think that's the first time I've heard that RB two in the class. Um, what club is he a member of? The club that we kind of recently came up with, the uh, two twenty and and twenty one. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, it's a very rare club. Uh, guys that I've measured there over two hundred twenty pounds that have hit over twenty one miles per hour. I yeah. think it's just you know Saquon Barkley, on Leonard Fournette. Um, Derrick Henry, I think there's only like six players on there. So it's a pretty exclusive And they're all really list. good. Yeah. They're all really good. Like you you kind of uh, – that's a good club to be a part of. Um, all right, David, tell me about your faller. And this is a guy I've cooled on as well after initially having them a little bit high. He didn't necessarily make my faller that I'm going to talk about. But De- Dellen Smothers, I think, headed to Oklahoma, unless that changed. Smaller guy, you know, what kind of made you not as excited this year? I think it was just collecting more information. I didn't have a guy that like really fell for me film wise, I guess. Um, Quentin Joyner probably would have fell in that category too for me, but um, just collecting more information on him. I guess he was verified at five ten and a half, one seventy three 173 prior to the season. And then he had some sort of transfer issue where he didn't play at all this year. Ooh. And I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about that. I just I'd rather have him out there playing and getting better at football. Generally, I don't know if that's bad philosophy, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. And uh, we were we were measuring his shoulders too. Matt and I were, and he's got like uh, very narrow shoulders. So I guess the idea behind that is we we're worried about his frame a little bit too. So it's like one thing to be 173 at this point, but to not quite have the frame to maybe get to. You know, I, it, just, it sounds like he probably won't even touch uh, 200. So that's, but I did, I really liked his junior film. I was really high on him. And now I'm just like, I just cooled on him just after collecting more information. I'm a little the same way. I didn't know the transfer issue, but I'm a little the same way. He His junior film was really impressive. And I, I've just cooled a little bit too. Um, 
just as a side note, I don't think we should always write off the transfer thing. Malik Neighbors uh, is a guy who did not play his senior year and immediately came on to LSU and was the best freshman. And now he's looking like, you know, a potential Debbie riser, even, you know, in terms of NFL potential after this season going over a thousand yards. So I uh, wouldn't write it off completely, but I agree with you that, you know, it's just another hurdle and there's already enough hurdles. This is already hard enough to project. So I don't blame you for kind of, you know, taking that into consideration. Um, you mentioned him, so I'll just bring him up too. Quinton Joyner is my big, big follower, almost a full point one from 0.73 to 6.4. Um, he just did not look nearly as dynamic on the senior tape. I mean, I think I also realized uh, through the process, you guys had an MPH on him that's not great. I think it's in the 19s maybe. No. Is that right? No, no, oh, no. no. He's, is he very fast? He's very okay. fast. Very I fast. thought that was one reason why. Maybe I just realized he's like a one-cut straight line guy. I docked a little change of direction and stuff. I can't remember. He just didn't look as dynamic as a senior, and I did drop him quite a bit. You said you cooled on him too, David. Um so anyway, uh, that's Quinton Joyner for me. David touched on it. And then, uh, Matt, give us your Benjamin Hall, and we can get out of here. Yeah, he was a sleeper I was pretty high on going into the season. I don't think any of the services had him you know, within their top 50 running backs. He was just outside. And uh, you know, he just didn't have a very good season. He he uh, didn't really improve at all. You know, he's a very big back, doesn't have great straight line speed. And uh, even at his size, he's not that big of a tackle breaker, which is kind of disappointing. And, you know, he didn't really get better in that area. He kind of had an up and down season, uh, and you know, even lost his job at certain points. So it's hard for me to project, you know, a guy like that to end up being the lead back at Michigan, where you know his in-house competition is going to be so much higher. Yeah, I hear you. I know there's been chatter in our Slack and stuff about um, some quotes, you know, from his high school, like. I'm glad he's out of here now to, you know, he had a rough season, but like you said, I mean, lost your own job in high school. Like that's not, that's a big red flag for sure. Um, I was never too high on him, but I know he, he's not the special club of 220 and 21, but he's a, uh, he's a bigger guy and he looked kind of spry and kind of a good inside the tackles runner, but yeah, exactly. Maybe kind of limited, uh, maybe kind of limited. So all right. Hey, those are some good names. Thanks, guys. Um, we will be doing – the schedule isn't totally solidified yet, but we're going to be talking about, you know, we got to do our three-star show. That's a big hit, and, you know, I think we've been keeping track, and we've got some really nice finds when we do that. Um, I'd like to do some G5 spotlights. I don't know if we'll have time to do every single conference in the G5, but um, definitely want to highlight some of these, like, you know, they're not going to be – top 50 even maybe top 100 of their position but you know we know a lot of these g5 commits and uh you know there's some guys and that's where you find some of the absolute best college fantasy because the defenses are weaker and guys are putting up six stats in uh in g5 so we want to look at that as well um but then we'll be turning the page to 2024 so stick with us gentlemen it's been a pleasure and we will talk more 2023 recruiting next week this is the official.